first of all, I would like to thank Casa Africa, UNWTO, and IFEMA for organizing this workshop. It's a really honor to participate in it. I will be the dynamizer, not consultant, that will share a lot of hours with you, unfortunately for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll have a lot of time to, to spend. Uh, I really need your inputs. I really uh, need your discussion, your projects. We, we need to enrich this workshop with real experiences, okay? First of all, I would like to talk about me. My name is Navin Kemlani. I'm 37 years old, born in Spain, but with Indian blood and skin, I'm married to children. I'm graduated in international marketing and trade, post-graduated in finance and marketing. I'm consultant since 2004 and professor since 2007. Those are my expertise areas, or at least I try to be expertise in that. I have uh, coordinated several programs for public institutions, inter for international internationalization, strategic promotion with the Canary Islands government, the chambers of commerce, uh, local governments, of course, Casa Africa, and international agencies. I have participated in World Bank procurements also always related with trade, investment, uh, and uh, strategic plans. I also conduct, uh, develop uh, in-company consultancy, where I mo mainly develop a strategic plans, foreign implementations, import and export procedures, help to, to the companies to participate in international procurements. I also uh, try to find the funding for several projects, market research, and sometimes I also do translation and interpretation. For the French speakers, you are lucky because uh, my interpreter has a better voice than me, uh, Mr. Da da Mr. David. <laughs> uh, I'm also a professor on international trade, online marketing and entrepreneurship. And during the year, I organize several trade missions, uh, mainly to Africa. Uh, as we are here in the Canary Islands, I'm based here. So my expertise is mainly Africa and business. Okay, I have conducted um, ma many international trade missions, uh, market research, implementation, procurements. So I really know Africa, I think. I think you have potential. And now that you know me, let's get started. I would like to show you first what we are going to discuss d these two days, okay? This first hour, I will try to resume what I want from you and what do you expect or what you will uh, have for your uh, personal experience, for your projects, etc. Okay. Let's see if this starts. Okay. One second. As you can see in the background image, tourists are ready to travel. They have their passport. They, they are almost in the plane and they want to travel to your continent, Africa. Okay. I would like to make some, some consideration first, four considerations before we start with the contents. The first one, as uh, Ms. Elsia told before, tourism matters. Tourism will create a lot of jobs if we implement proper policies to 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 get uh, the population work in this sector uh, in a massive way i would say tourists bring inclusion and, uh, and economic di diversification 
we have to try always and protect our communities to get them involved in the tourism project because that enriches also the, the tourist experience in of the tourist. It will bring sustainable uh, in a long-term view and of course economic diversification. Uh, as you will discuss later, many uh, commodities countries have suffered during these two, three years uh, a, a mini crisis or a big crisis depending on the country. So we need to be less dependent on, on commodities and more dependent on tourism. We have to protect also, and this is the uh, International Year of uh, Sustainable Tourism, we have to insist on that. If we protect our nature, our environment, we'll have more tourists to <coughs> that will come to our countries. And of course, uh, the communities will be uh, integrated, will accept the pr tourist project, and for sure it will bring economic viability. And the last one, we have to be alert on what's going on with the tourism sector. It changes every day, every time, depending on, on many factors. Uh, last year, for example, China was uh, issuing a lot of tourist people. Uh, they are suffering, it seems, a, a, a small crisis, so they will not travel a lot this year or the next year. But we have millennials that are more conscious, they'll They'll travel to places where, where they respect the civil society and some human values. We have the technology, IT, how is changing the tourism sector I, totally. We can buy our ticket and book our hotel with a mobile. Five years back or ten years back was not possible. I mean, we need to think that technology matters. Tourists will consult if the place is safe the visa, how long it takes, how, how much it costs. We have it all on the internet now. So we have to think about an IT strategy also for, for tourism, e-tourism strategy, I call it. So after the four uh, co previous considerations, let's go into the different blocks that we will discuss during these two days and please I need your inputs, I need your knowledge, I need your savoir-faire, your the every, anything you, you need we, we, we can discuss it. You, we have a mic av available so you can talk whenever you feel like, okay? Interrupt me whenever you want. We need to identify trends and um, opportunities. We need to study how is the situation in terms of economy, in terms of the tourism sector. If there is one sector, one industry that data mining is important, is the tourism sector. Because all these data, tourist arrivals, how much they spend, how, how many beds do you have in your country, it gives a lot of information that helps to develop future plans in a short, medium, and long term. We have to study the business and, and uh, investment environment. We have to know how we are uh, with another countries. You may think you are all competitors with, within each other of each delegation that is here, but it, it could be, but it could also help to identify a country that is expert on the project you want to develop and ask for help to send uh, experts and help you to develop the, the project. I mean, you have to share information. You have to open, be open. Of course, I, I, I will not ask to give the full details, but if you need help, ask for it, okay? We need to identify a project what are the main aspects that the investor needs or our funding agency needs to know okay of course the project have to be feasible in a technical and a economic way 
if it's feasible, we have to promote it. What do we have to do to prepare a communication plan? Then, if we promote it, we need funds. Maybe we promote the project to, to ask funds, or maybe we have it, and what we need is experience. Depends on the case. We have to adapt our communication plans to each project. And of course, we have to monitor and evaluate every action we, we develop and uh, do to correct anything we have done wrong. Okay, Those are the main blocks that we are going to speak about during these two days. I have condensed much in one day and a half the contents. Uh, we will have also uh, a debate and a role play session. Okay, I will divide uh, uh, the attendees. I will divide you in three groups. Also, we'll practice uh, many of these aspects. Uh, okay, I have given you uh, the first block uh, that I'm going to present now. The rest and even this, uh, we will send it to you by by email. So you will have all the information. Okay, so don't worry about it. Okay. Trends and opportunity analysis. We have to analyze information. We need to know how to analyze it. We need to know where to find the, the, the information. Okay. For example, the International Monetary Fund publish every six months, every six months, their economic outlook for the world. Okay. We need to have the report and we need to read it. We need to read how they are evaluating our country and how they are evaluating our competitors because they rank them uh, at the end of the day. And your mission with the government, of course, is to increase that rank. Okay. Uh, as you can see in the, the la last IMF Outlook report was issued on August, this August, and it seems there is a firm recovery in terms of economy or in terms of GDP. Uh, they are prospecting some uh, good uh, growth for emerging countries like yours. But advanced economy are still low growth. Okay. There are some risks, geopolitical issues. We have issues with uh, South uh, North Korea, we have issues with Iran, we have issues with some some of you with United States maybe, because Mr. Trump has issued a sorry for the expression a blacklist where you cannot enter for some of African or Middle East uh, people. That's that's a very big problem because many. American could invest in your country, but if Mr. Trump doesn't allow it, we have to find another market. Okay? We need to know this kind of information. Of course, the Brexit, how will it affect to the European U Union mainly, but maybe for the Commonwealth, it, it will increase the bonds. I don't know. We have to check. Uh, there are still starting to the negotiate. It will take a lot of time, but we have to be alert on that also. China. What's going on in, ch in China? A lot, lo lot of credit issues, low interest. Maybe they will have in a future problems like in Europe with the, with the financial crisis. We have to check on that. They are not consuming commodities uh, as much as before at least. That will reduce their investment in the emerging countries or emerging continents like Africa, South America, etc. So you have to know all this information. Okay. Uh, th there is a trend to isolate economies uh, with the Brexit, for example, with the United States again that they are breaking ties with Canada and Mexico. I mean, there are a lot of issues that you, you, you must know. You must understand that everything else is, will affect you, finally, because we live in a globalized, interconnected economy. So everything affects. So uh, starting from the big data, the, in the concept of data mining, 
you need to understand how is your country and how will er, er, everything will affect you okay There is also a report the, that the African Development uh, Bank uh, issues every year is the African Economic Outlook that studies how well was the economy in the l past year and the possible trends for the next two years. For instance, in 2017 th there will be a growth, not enough for me, and 2018 it, it will increase a bit more but again it's not enough for me africa to be a, in a to participate in a global economy to be more inclusive should grow at least f between 5.5 and 6 percent as you can see there is still a gap because the prospect is 4.3 percent uh, as you may know, because you come from there and you, you, you suffer all the issues, uh, the, the commodity, commodity prices are affecting you in your, your balance, in your GDP. But that means that now is the moment to think and to develop another sectors, and tourism is one of them. Africa will double population in, from here till 2050 due to more childbirth and due to urbanization. Rural, so, 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 rural population is going to the urban cities and they will need employment. Tourism is one sector that can cover part of that employment. What is missing in this map? Where is Africa? This map shows the most dependent economies on tourism. Africa is represented by Morocco, South Africa, and one or two more countries. And what about the rest? Another sign that shows you that there is huge potential for tourism development in your countries. Okay? It's quite visual. Okay, we'll go through it, this map. We'll analyze it during these two days. Uh, all these trends, uh, we we need to know them properly. Okay, we we need to analyze them. This is a workshop. This is not a, a seminar. I need your comments. I need your maybe you you don't agree with me. I I need to know that you you don't need to. Uh, of course, you you don't need to agree with me. I'm. <laughs> no one compared with you that may have a lot of years of experience in the tourism sector, but what I, as much as I know, there's a huge potential in tourism sector in your countries. Okay. The graph that Elsia, Miss Elsia showed before, uh, this report is a long-term report. 2030, but look at 2020, where in 2017 end, 2018 is starting. We have only two years, two years to put some measures and receive more tourists in our countries. This is the cake. This is the size of the cake in, in 2020. 1.4 billion people traveling for tourism reasons. How much can we uh, accept in our countries? how much we need in our countries to have a sustainable tourism sector. We need to know that. We need to know how many hotels do you have and how many beds you can, you, you can handle yearly. Hmm? There, I think there, is, there are some architects over here. Uh, what we can do with the locations? What they need to, to develop projects? We need to understand every single issue. We need to put up on the table measures to receive this amount of tourists. It's up to you, up to you. We are here to help you. We are giving you a lot of uh, uh, tools to develop your, your country, but at the end of the day, it's you who have to put up measures in your countries. 
and change the mentality maybe in your countries because sometimes it's a question of attitude and aptitude also. You need to train your staff also. Okay? Africa. Well, it has doubled its contribution in terms of GDP and unemployment. So it says that you are doing things, but as Ms. Elsia told before, the growth is only 5% or 3% per annum. We can improve that, sure. Okay. If you see here, Africa is one of the continents that is more uh, active in terms of tourism because it, it comes from quite low rates. So it's normal that they have low, uh, sorry, big, big increases, but there is, it's not enough. We, we need more in Africa, okay? Because, for example, uh, millennial tourists want to visit Africa, but y you need some something to show. You need order in, in your country. You need to put up and promote your tourist tourism assets. Be more active on that. Okay. And according to the UNWTO, 134 million will visit Africa in the year 2030. That's your share. What you will do? Do you have capacity to assimilate so much tourists? It's, it's a low rate, it's big. We need to analyze that. Africa has more than 50 countries. If we divide it, it's not so much. No? So this figure can, can increase a lot, but depends on you. Regarding the business and climate diagnosis, the investor will will search, will ask if you if your country, for example, is easy to open a business, a company, how long it takes, how much does it cost, easy, difficult. Well, we have several reports. The World Bank, for example, have the doing business report that ranks how how easy it is to do business in your country. We can improve that, I'm sure. Foreign uh, direct investment. As you can see, uh, w again, it's increasing. Not so much, it's around 5% uh, per year, but at least it's increasing. We have to take advantage of that. There is money willing to invest outside the, the frontiers of or the countries that have money. We need to know which countries, which sectors, how much they are going to spend, or how much they are willing to spend or invest. How we can convince them? How long that will take? Are they interested in our continent, in our country? We need to analyze who is interested in our country. China? Germany, Spain, we need to know who, who is investing in our country. And you have that information. You already have it. You need co to coordinate actions and information with your promotion agency. I think every country has a, a, an international agency that promotes investment in, in your countries. You have to talk with them. You have to coordinate action with them. Okay. Africa. The Africa Investment Report is a report uh, conducted by the FDI magazine uh, uh, with another uh, well-known uh, magazine that is the, the Economist. Well, as you know, it's a well-reputed worldwide magazine. And they publish a report every year uh, and uh, summarize ho how many projects that have been implemented in Africa which are the main sectors and which are the main countries. Uh, the last one, it was published also this summer, accounted for 2016 602 projects. 
being construction, the main activity, real estate, the, the main sector, and the first country, surprise, is Egypt. It's not South Africa, it's not Nigeria. Why? Because it's apparently more stable than years before after all the issues, uh, political and terrorism issues that they have suffered during these years. So they are being active in, in Egypt. Okay. Morocco is the third uh, res recipient in, in, in terms of construction investment. Morocco is booming. Morocco is also a reference in terms of tourism in, in North Africa. Because the neighbors of, uh, North, of uh, Morocco in North Africa are still uh, having some political issues, uh, economic uh, instability. But for example, Tunis had a growth of 30% compared with last year in terms of international arrivals. 30% in one year. It has also dropped a lot, but I mean, they are doing things well. They are promoting their destination, their location. So we need to be more active. And of course, inside of real estate and construction, uh, it's included the tourism sector. It's already included. But 600 projects in a year in 54 countries for me, it's still little. I'm sure we can increase that that figure. And tourism is able to assume more projects. But we need to easy things for them, for the investors. Uh, it's not putting a red carpet always to, to the investor, but at least if the I investment is I or the project is interesting, facilitate the the project okay then we need to look at the investment in the tourism sector as as you can see i'm going from the macro level to the micro level okay we have started talking about economic trends and now we are entering in our sector in tourism sector but it's, it is necessary to have the, the previous background. Let's see if this works. Okay, now. Another report that I recommend you to read is the uh, Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Report that the World Economic Forum, another n international well-reputed organization, issues every year and says that in 2016, there were that amount of billions, a lot of billions of dollars, and it, it accounted 4.4% of the total investment. Uh, it still is little, only 4.4%. In 2017 and 18, it will increase 4.5%. Hotel investments is a tangible e asset of of the tourism sector. You can see big buildings, etc. Is is something that you can see evident that there is movement in your sector. There is investment. If there are hotels, it means there is something to visit or to do there in your country. So in 2016, we saw some shifts and the reports uh, uh, that uh, Hotel Investment Outlook uh, developed or conduct showed that China, for example, is reducing inv investment abroad, so we need to find another market. As the United States is not so keen in investing, at least during these years, in Africa, and China is reducing investment we need to find another markets, okay? And we'll we'll target them later. We can target them in in many many ways. 
maybe by tourist emissions, if you receive a lot of German people, maybe a German hotel chain would invest in your country because that will make more easy the, the entrance f of more German tourists, for example, or British. Okay. I recommend you this. All these recommendations, all these reports, I will send them also by email, uh, and the direct link to 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 them. Okay, and as Miss Elsia mentioned before, uh, we would like to summarize everything in a in a handbook or in a publication uh, for you to have it and and access the information in a clear way, because. What happens in this workshop the day after is is a bit difficult for you because you have many many things to do and many international fairs to attend. I know you you are quite busy and I really appreciate you are here to to share time with me. But if you ha we think if you have a manual, a handbook, or or something that you can read whenever you have any doubt, it will be useful. Okay. So take this time to share with me your comments uh, because that will also enrich the, the handbook, okay? Anything you may need that it's missing during my, my speech, uh, it's not a speech, it's a workshop, but I need you to, to give me your inputs, okay? So as you can see, it's not, it's not too heavy, this report is only 20 pages, very easy to read. Okay, but unfortunately, we they don't talk much about Africa and they mix it with the Middle East. If we want them to analyze our continent, we need to tackle them and be more active. Okay, gain more visibility in, in international organizations, be more visible in terms of tourism sector, sell better, more, the tourism opportunities of your sector, okay? See, it it's only appears Middle East all the time and they mix it with, with, with Africa, but still, it gives you a, a whole vision of worldwide, okay? How is, how is the behavior? How are the investment, where are they going? and how they are doing that is if it's only private capital or is public resources also we'll talk about that during these two days also okay let's go back to the to the presentation okay as I told you before, the uh, tourism, travel, tourism, uh, tourism and Travel Competitiveness Report of the World Economic Forum analyzes all these aspects of your country. We'll see the report and we'll see how is your country. Because maybe you haven't seen this report. Anyone have seen this report? Only one. You need to know this report. You, you need to ha know how competitive is your sector because it's analyzed for uh, by an organization that is quite neutral and analyzed in, uh, in, in terms of uh, all those aspects with objective data. And the rankings. I will show it to you. Look at this, 387 pages. My God. Lot of information, but very useful also. 
I know you don't have time. I, uh, I'm conscious of that, but you have many uh, off hours. Uh, for example, at the airport or at at the planes, you can print it out and read it. Uh, it's an idea. Or if you have technical stuff, maybe they can summarize it for you and take out the the main conclusion of the report. It has a executive summary, of course, but you may need to to check your country, and they have. You can see here country economic profiles. It starts on the page seventy-eight and ends on the page three hundred and fifty. So they analyze every single country. And your country is included. I have reviewed all the countries before we we have started this this workshop. Uh, as I knew what delegation were coming, I analyzed them already. So I know things. Okay, as, and we need to discuss it. So we have the enable environment, the policy, the inf infrastructure, and the n how important is the natural c culture resources in your country. And it covers a lot of index I items. Okay, so it's quite deep. We will talk about the project identification. I have seen also when you present uh, to investor your project, how, how you present uh, your project. And as you already pointed out in the last survey, that satisfaction survey that you uh, fulfilled in, in last investor, we need to improve the project identification. Okay? And these questions that we'll see later will help you a lot to develop the project identification. To uh, identify is it if it's worth the while continuing or or not. Of course, it should be a feasible project in terms of technical feasibility, financial facility. I always recommend, and international organizations also recommend, to start with a pre-feasibility study. That is quite deep, but it's not so deep at the proper f feasible study. That includes more m more figures and more data. Okay. Before the representative of the Congo showed me <laughs> a big amount of documents, quite heavy, and I will I will use it as an example if you allow me. Okay, and this is interactivity. I need your interactivity. If anyone else wants to share their project, bienvenue. Okay, I need your projects. I need to review them if you want me to to help you. Okay, I was uh, I was telling to the representative of R RDC that uh, it's a very good job, a lot of document, but as the previous uh, a speaker of IFEMA told we only have 10 minutes with the investor. We cannot show him five or her 500 pages. Impossible in 10 minutes. We need, for instance, an ex executive summary to resume everything. And we need to know how to develop a proper executive summary with marketing elements. Not only descriptive. We need to sell the project because we will give him or her the the possible investor or the possible funding agency a document of three pages, three pages only. But it should be attractive. We need to sell. We need he to attract his uh, his or her attention because he or she receives a lot of documents every day lot of executive summaries. 
What is the added value of, your, of our project? What type of tourism are we going to develop in our project? Religious, cultural, uh, environment, leisure. There is a lot of type of tourism. We need to ident identify properly what we are going to sell. Of course, we will discuss about feasibility in terms of if we decide to go with the project or not. And you have to be honest on, on this issue. It's not worth to force projects just for this funding. There is funding available uh, and they have told us to present, for example, a project in terms of tourism. We cannot invent from one day to other a project. We need to analyze it, we need to prepare it well. It's not only one day, it takes a lot of time. I mean, the representative of RDC, I don't know how much he took to develop all this project, but... Uh, it's, sorry, Cameroon, sorry. <laughs> sorry for the confusion. But months, not even weeks, months to prepare everything. We need to involve technical stuff in terms of architecture, planning, financial, marketing, etc. So it's not only one person doing the everything. We need to involve a lot of people and that takes time. Okay. So we'll talk about if it's worth the while continuing with your projects or not and what we can do if it's not feasible. Okay? There is always a solution. Always. One is, w we know that it's feasible, we have to promote it. Okay? We have to prepare information. Okay? In three different approaches. We need to develop uh, an action plan by first selecting who we are going to target, what kind of investor we need, from where and why. And, of course, the most important thing, if we don't have money or we need more, we need to identify who is keen on funding our project. Is a public source? Is a private source? Okay. We'll talk about them. Uh, we have uh, this uh, international financing institution, like the World Bank, IF IFC, African Development Bank, bilateral cooperation that you may have with another country, f for instance, France, Germany, Spain. You need to tell me if you have national tourism plans with a budget allocation and a, a clear timeline. Will I will ask you each of you if you have a plan and to uh, explain it in uh, over here to for the rest of the attendees you need to know who are the private sources private corporation private equity financing banks for example we'll talk a lot about the ppp model public private partnership projects actually it's four p's not three but everyone uses three. Uh, we'll analyze them. Of of course, we we will involve the human community in our tourism project. We will talk about it, how we can involve them, because I know it can cause problems with them. And as I, I told you, we will select the variables of three impacts social impact, environmental impact, and economic impact. We have to uh, monitor and evaluate all of them. There are a lot of things we have to m monitor and evaluate. So we'll talk about them also. And this is it. It's, as you can see, it's in two days is it will be a bit condensed. But I will share with you the main ideas, the, the, the for you to 
at your home, at your place, to analyze them and, of course, uh, go deep into it. The final idea, as we have told in the previous panels, is to prepare a better project, for, for instance, for in Investor or another international forum you, you may assist. We want to share with you the different uh, structures of project that you can present or introduce to possible partners. But apart from that, if you do this homework, I would say, you will know better what you do you need really. This document is very useful for you, for your government, for your people, for your private sector that should be involved in, in developing all this. It will allow you to know what kind of uh, training your population needs, for example. Professional training, management training. What kind of training do you need to allow your people to, to get a job in, in the sector that you are developing? Inclusive growth, okay? Now that I have introduced myself, I have introduced the main issues that we are going to talk about. I would like to have your inputs to present, to introduce yourself, and w what do you expect from, from my side to, to share with you. I will pass a, a mic if it's available, and we'll start from the first row, and we'll go behind, okay? My name is Aurelia Aussi. I'm from Ivory Coast. Um, I'm working in the uh, tourism minister, Ministry of Tourism in Ivory Coast as a consular, um, focused on the investment part. Um, I think that what I'm looking for and what we all looking for is for solutions um, to have better to have investors, people to invest in the project that we are building in the team. This is, I think this is it. And having maybe other, um, another outlook in the perspective. Vous pouvez parler en français si je comprends en français, c'est meilleur. Ok, donc avoir en fait un regard différent sur uh, la perspective qu'on a, nous, au ministère du Tourisme de Côte d'Ivoire, et euh, bien sûr aider, euh, trouver des solutions pour aider à capter des fonds euh, pour les projets pour lesquels, euh, sur lesquels on travaille, euh, euh, on travaille au ministère. Euh, voilà. Ok, parfait. Merci. Oui. Alors, je suis Daniel Andy, je suis conseiller technique euh, du ministre du Tourisme de Côte d'Ivoire. Alors, ce que nous recherchons en venant ici, c'est déjà avoir euh, une nouvelle expérience, une autre source d'expérience. Comment, euh, vous l'avez dit tout à l'heure, mieux identifier en fait ce, des cibles qui pourraient nous aider, nous accompagner surtout sur les différents projets que nous avons. Aussi, euh, comment structurer euh, le montage de nos projets. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, c'est vrai, euh, l'expérience d'un pays tiers n'est forcément pas... Euh, euh, la même que nous. Donc nous avions aussi euh, un élément important dont vous aviez parlé, c'est la connaissance de nos communautés. Donc c'est toute cette expérience-là que nous recherchons en venant euh, euh, ici, échanger avec vous qui êtes euh, des professionnels en fait du secteur du, du tourisme et aussi les échanges avec euh, l'ensemble des, des participants d'autres pays avec des expériences diverses. Merci. Euh, merci, je suis Lamine Dambélé, directeur des affaires financières du ministère du Tourisme ben, de Côte d'Ivoire. Ce qui m'amène ici, c'est surtout l'aspect source de financement des activités du tourisme. Parce que les budgets de nos États s'amenuisent face aux différents problèmes sociaux qu'il faut résoudre. Donc, euh, ce qui fait que le tourisme euh, a, une, a la part euh, congrue dans le budget. Maintenant, moi, mon souci, c'est de co comment faire pour trouver d'autres sources de financement. Sinon, les projets, il y en a, on les développe ch chaque jour, mais c'est les sources de financement qui m'intéresseraient. Euh, 
Bien, moi c'est Mme Diara Souba Maferima. Je suis euh, directeur général euh, en charge de la gestion de tout le patrimoine hôtelier de l'État de Côte d'Ivoire. Et donc, euh, ma présence ici, euh, je peux dire, j'ai déjà participé au FITO, mais j'avoue que euh, la, ma présence à Investo me permet de regarder en arrière et de me dire que j'aurais dû commencer par Investo. Et je pense que j'aurai beaucoup à, à apprendre euh, en termes de, surtout, euh, diversification de, de l'offre touristique. Parce que chez nous, c'est plutôt un tourisme basé sur euh, le business. Et donc, aujourd'hui, euh, nous cherchons à diversifier notre euh, offre euh, afin d'attirer le maximum de tourisme en Côte d'Ivoire. Merci. Oui. Moi, je suis euh, Bogui Eric. Je fais partie de la délégation de la Côte d'Ivoire. Je suis membre de l'ambassade de Côte d'Ivoire à Madrid. Donc, euh, c'est plutôt l'approche diplomatique du tourisme. Vous, vous savez que le ministère des Affaires étrangères, la porte d'entrée de tous les projets et c'est un réceptacle aussi de, des projets en vue de présenter ces projets dans le cadre des relations bilatérales avec euh, bilatérales, aussi bien bilatérales que multilatérales présenter ces projets recueillis par nos structures donc euh, c'est pour cela que je, je suis là pour accompagner ma délégation merci Euh, Rémi Mayaki, directeur adjoint du programme Afrique au sein de l'OMT. Euh, bon, je ne vais pas trop m'étendre parce que c'est plus les participants qui doivent, qui, doivent, qui doivent parler. Mais bon, nous, dans le cadre de, de l'OMT, pour nous, c'est une opportunité unique d'avoir de, 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 ce premier projet pilote euh, qui a été élaboré sur la base des... des, comment dire, des, des des besoins de, de nos pays membres, euh, donc comment euh, préparer un projet de manière euh, euh, idoine, euh, avoir les éléments nécessaires euh, pour justement préparer ces projets-là, identifier des, des sources potentielles de financement, ça c'est l'une des problématiques les plus, les, plus, les plus importantes. Donc nous avec Casa Africa et puis euh, nos, nos partenaires d'IFEMA, on, on, on lance euh, cette première initiative qui on espère sera la première d'une longue série, et on espère qu'à l'issue de, 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 de cet atelier, euh, l'ensemble des participants pourront, euh, certaines de leurs réponses ou certaines de leurs leur, leur, leur problématiques pourront être abordées, euh, pourront être, euh, j'espère qu'on pourrait répondre. Et euh, ce n'est qu'une qu première étape, c'est-à-dire que c'est un travail continu, hein, ce n'est pas uniquement deux jours et puis ensuite on passe à autre chose. L'appui, le, 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 il, est, il, est, il est constant. Euh, de la part du consultant, de la part de l'OMT, également, on a, on a une vision également à court terme parce que on prépare également la Investour, euh, où on, est, on cherche à renforcer les capacités à ce niveau-là. Donc, on, on, on espère vraiment que, que cette initiative-là va porter ses fruits et qu'on répondra aux besoins de, des participants et des, qui, qui, qui sont déplacés ici. Merci. Je sais pas. Hello once again. I uh, I don't want to make any more uh, long uh, discussions, but I think uh, this is a very great opportunity for all of us gathered here, especially with the continuation of uh, presentation of projects. We find that this is one area where with Investor, we've been successful with the part where we talk about the roundtable discussions, discussing the different issues that are pertinent to our region. But we find that when it comes to the B2B, this is where there was a big lack. But I think even having uh, several countries here, it's a good opportunity also to exchange and see maybe where uh, you can learn from each other as well, as Navin rightly said. So I think this is a great platform. It will be 
two very interesting days, but the most important is the take back, what you can bring back with you to really refine your projects. And so when we gather in Investor next year, it will be with a proposal that you know you've taken into account the most important things to be able to attract the investors to really look at investing in your projects. So once again, uh, I wish you all a, a very good workshop. Thank you. So my name is Isra. I am the consultant that will be working uh, for Investur. And uh, as Elsia Grandcourt mentioned, um, the purpose of this workshop is uh, to give the participants um, the opportunity to uh, better develop the projects that they wish to, pro to present during Investur so that next time when we meet for Investur, we have projects that are well structured, and um, we ha so m which means greater opportunity for finding investors. Euh, je suis Djamel Barrault du Cameroun. Euh, je travaille euh, pour euh, quelques États et surtout euh, la communauté des États de l'Afrique centrale, la CEAC, pour les projets de tourisme. Euh, je me réjouis de ce premier atelier qui vraiment euh, vient à point nommé parce que les États de l'Afrique centrale sont découragés d'investir. Vous pouvez voir au niveau de la, de la salle, il n'y a que quelques participants et ces participants relèvent du secteur public, hein, c'est-à-dire la fonction publique. Mais le, les partenaires privés eux-mêmes qui sont à la recherche, à la quête des financements ne sont pas venus. Pourquoi Parce qu'ils sont découragés. Les huit dernières éditions depuis euh, organisées à Investo, beaucoup sont venus, mais ils sont rentrés sans... Des, euh, des projets con concluants. Hein. Ils sont rentrés découragés parce qu'il n'y avait rien. Euh, je pense qu'ils... Euh, Peut-être qu'ils avaient tort. Tort, pourquoi Parce qu'on ne les a pas appris dès le début à, à les montrer les formats de montage des dossiers, comment monter des dossiers. Et, et ça, bon, peut-être que je tire un peu sur Casa Africa, qui pendant longtemps... Euh, a fait la promotion, n'est-ce pas, de ce cadre, de cette plateforme, mais sans les montrer, sans montrer à ceux-là qui cherchent des financements comment monter les dossiers physiques, l'objet de cet atelier. Et comme je dis, je viens avec la soif, soif parce que je viens déjà avec un projet dans mon, 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 mon sac, et je voulais rentrer vraiment je, avec la solution, parce que euh, euh, certains pays, beaucoup des investisseurs attendent que je rentre avec une réponse. Vraiment, je, 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 je souhaite que ça soit concret, comme vous l'avez dit, parce que euh, nos États qui sont en crise, crise de pétrole, veulent trouver des nouvelles sources de revenus. Et je sors de Brazzaville, où on a organisé pendant trois jours, trois jours une conférence sur le fonds vert, sur l'économie verte. Et le tourisme, le tourisme fait partie des secteurs prioritaires retenus par les États. Et je pense que, euh, avec l'OMT, avec vous, on devrait euh, essayer d'appuyer les secteurs privés à monter des projets viables. Et comment monter les projets viables C'est ce que nous sommes venus faire. Je vous dis, nos États, certains États, beaucoup de privés attendent les, les résolutions, n'est-ce pas de, de cet atelier. Je représente beaucoup, je porte le fardeau de beaucoup et je dois rentrer avec les solutions. Merci beaucoup. Buenos dias a todos. Eh, mi nombre es Julio da Silva, soy de Angola. Soy el director de inversiones en el turismo. Nuestra, nuestro ministerio está... Nuestro país ha aprobado un nuevo, una nueva ley de inversiones. Y entonces creó un, una estructura que cuida de las inversiones en todos los ministerios. Yo soy el director de inversiones para el turismo. 
Nosotros estamos aquí, eh, es la primera vez que participamos y nuestro objetivo con esta participación Okay. Yeah, I can speak English a little bit. So I must start. Good morning. My name is Julio da Silva. Sorry for my English, not so so good. Uh, I'm from Angola. Uh, I'm the director of uh, investment in tourism. Uh, my country have approved a new law that uh, made possible in each, in each minister to handle uh, a department for the investment. So I'm uh, a director for the investment in tourism. Uh, we came to this meeting. Uh, this is our first participation in order to, to know how it's work. We came to, to learn uh, the experience from other countries and as well the experience uh, of uh, Casa Africa during these 10 years. Uh, of course, we, this is our first participation uh, and we are open to see and to learn. Of course, we need uh, this acknowledgement because our, we have a, a white country and uh, with this uh, oil crisis, we need to the, the, the verification of our, our economy. We have more than 1,600 kilometers of, uh, of sea coast. Of course, you have a lot of opportunity on tourism, but of course, we need a lot of investment as well. So we can be here to learn with uh, your experience, of course. We will need, as a consultant, we will need all the information that can be, can make this possible. Thank you. Bonjour, je suis Miriam Dayo. Uh, je suis la directrice générale de tourisme uh, et hôtellerie à Sao Tomé et Principe. Uh, Mon pays, c'est des îles, euh, et comme il, il y a beaucoup de vocations pour le développement du tourisme. Et maintenant, euh, l'État de Sao Tomé est vraiment motivé par, pour le développement de ce secteur-là. Et dans cette année, on a préparé à Sao Tomé notre euh, deuxième stratégie pour le développement du tourisme, 2018-2025. Et comme ça, euh, cette stratégie, elle définit beaucoup d'actions, beaucoup de programmes et projets pour implémenter, pour, pour développer les secteurs. Et je suis ici pour euh, prendre, pour mieux prendre euh, la, règle, la règle, la condition pour préparer, élaborer notre projet pour, pour ce qu'on peut vraiment euh, obtenir le financement pour ça. C'est tout. Good morning. My name is Berendine Libba. I'm Head of Tourism Management at the University of Pretoria and I'm representing um, our National Department of Tourism in South Africa who um, has uh, been putting a lot more emphasis on tourism investment and tourism as a priority for, for economic growth in our country. And um, they have found that uh, too many applications are not successful, funding applications. So um, I am here to learn and gain insights into the factors that uh, determine greater success in both public and private uh, sector uh, funding applications at forums such as Investor, etc. So um, I have to take back my insights and also um, uh, uh, provide those to the department to enable them to to facilitate better investment funding applications. Thank you. 
Good morning. My name is Peter Odundo. I work with the Kenya Embassy in Madrid. I'm here representing uh, the Ambassador of Kenya. Uh, first of all, I, I want to thank Casa Africa for such a wonderful forum to share the the experiences in the tourism uh, industry. Uh, having been taken through most of the introductions, uh, I realized that most of the, the issues are, are really touching in Africa. And this forum should have been there as early as yesterday. Uh, I really get more concerned uh, when it comes to uh, the funding because uh, I know Africa needs this money, this funding, uh, a lot because most of the, the development that we require in the tourism industry requires uh, substantial funding. And it's only through this kind of awareness that uh, uh, African states can access the funds to develop the tourism uh, industry. I was shocked because uh, having seen my country, Kenya, or rather Africa, uh, not showing any visibility in terms of... <laughs> is, is actually appearing as uh, the East, what was it? The North, the Middle East. But uh, through my experience, I know Kenya has done uh, wonderfully in terms of uh, tourism. It's just because of uh, one or two challenges that comes uh, once in a while. And as you clearly pointed out, this affects the the tourism industry. It's because I. My own perception is also a very fragile kind of uh, industry. But through this forum, I've learned a lot, and I'm sure I'll be able to share a lot with uh, with my my ambassador, because uh, most of the most of what we are we are talking here and what we are still going to to be told actually are important issues that we need to share with the most of our states. I'm here with my colleague, whom we came together with. I, I'm sure he'll be able to talk a lot, touching on Kenya as a, as a country. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, my name is Anthony Kiriba. And uh, we thank you for inviting us here. I also work at the Kenya Embassy. And uh, above all, it's nice to demystify the consultants. So we are happy that we can, we can see you physically and engage each other. I thank the UNWTO, especially the Africa Desk, which we, we work hand in hand on very many issues. And uh, Casa Africa, which of course is like our father here in, uh, in, in Spain. And... Uh, you have introduced us to, 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 to the subject that we are going to discuss in the next two days. I, I can see why you are getting bold, but don't worry. We shall also contribute as much as we can. Uh, mine, in terms of just to, to help you proceed in the next two days, would be uh, simple things. One, how do we relate tourism development vis-a-vis uh, biodiversity, for that matter. And when you're talking about biodiversity, you come to talk about things like uh, how to process waste. And uh, when you're talking about expanding the bed capacity in a park, my South African colleague would be able to, to, to look at that. You have a park. You have so many uh, tented camps or hotels uh, to get to the target you're talking about means expanding the 
the bad capacity in that particular tourism, the implications, the implications is what we need to look at uh, um, uh, exactly. How can that be done without having to affect the animals, without having to give them some headache or something? Uh, and uh, the environment, uh, sustaining the two, which is what UNWT has been telling us for the whole year, is something that we really need to balance. Secondly, when you're talking about investment and you're talking about uh, feasibility studies, uh, I'm sure if you go to the Minister of Tourism in Kenya today and produce feasibility, we can give you a hundred in one day. But I think now we need to sit down and come up with what kind of uh, feasibilities you're you you looking at. We pick them up, take them to, to Kenya. Probably the Minister of Tourism in Kenya will hold a workshop of the same nature. So we can narrow down to what you're looking for and then present. Uh, that is what I, I, I would think about. And I'm also happy to meet all my colleagues here. And I hope that we'll have two days of sharing a lot of knowledge. Thank you very much. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Wanji Kondongo from Kenya. I'm a medical doctor, but found myself uh, in the tourism sector. I currently run a lodge, a tented camp in Trukana. That's about 700 kilometers from Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. Um, I am here to best uh, to learn how to best the. Uh, Maybe I'm looking to open two other lodges, so I'm here to learn how to best uh, present uh, the information that I have so that I can be able to attract uh, potential investors. Oh, and I'm really excited uh, despite having lost my luggage. <laughs> so please uh, forgive me for, for the way I'm dressed up. <laughs> Everybody else is looking very well dressed up but uh, that's the reason why I'm I'm this uh, I'm dressed up this way <laughs> so but thank you so much I'm happy to be here and uh, looking forward to learn a lot thank you see this is a, a, a an example of how tourism affects in terms of uh, making easy the life of the of the tourists okay alors uh, bonjour tout le monde moi c'est uh, Idil Mohamed euh, je viens de la République de Djibouti. Je travaille avec l'Office national de tourisme de Djibouti en tant que euh, chargé de développement du tourisme et de la protection de l'environnement. Alors, le gouvernement djiboutien a, euh, depuis ces dix dernières années, placé le secteur du tourisme comme un secteur prioritaire dans sa stratégie nationale de développement. Et euh, donc, ce que j'attends euh, de cet atelier, euh, c'est euh, de comprendre comment élaborer et identifier euh, des projets touristiques et, euh, par effet, ricocher aussi comment les promouvoir au niveau régional, et mais aussi continental et euh, international, euh, tout en impliquant aussi le secteur euh, privé. Euh, et euh, un deuxième point aussi, c'est euh, de comment identifier les, les potentielles sources de financement pour ces projets touristiques. Voilà, merci beaucoup. Jean Kingombe Chali. Je suis directeur chef des services du tourisme et des accords internationaux en République démocratique du Congo. Nous tenons d'abord à, à remercier les organisateurs de cet atelier parce que cet atelier est une réponse à, aux préoccupations et aux besoins des États membres d'Afrique chaque fois que nous avons participé aux activités de FITU ou d'Investour. Effectivement, à ce moment-là, il s'est toujours posé des problèmes de présentation des projets. Nous pensons donc que cette réponse positive va nous aider à mieux structurer nos projets et à mieux les présenter auprès d'investisseurs euh, potentiels. Donc, nous attendons de cet atelier comment structurer effectivement ces projets, mais euh, d'une manière particulière, comme l'a dit l'un de nos collègues, euh, nos budgets nationaux euh, ne peuvent pas prendre en charge euh, beaucoup d'actions 
pour monter les projets. Est-ce que euh, dans cet atelier, on pourra, dans un premier temps, trouver les mécanismes pour trouver des financements pour les études de faisabilité. Parce qu'au départ de là, on peut alors faire quelque chose. Sinon, on est bloqué. C'est une première préoccupation. La deuxième, c'est comment trouver ces financements dans un environnement où la perception que l'on se fait de certains pays peut décourager certains investisseurs. Nous pensons que ces éléments-là euh, aident également. Pour la République démocratique du Congo, euh, aujourd'hui, euh, on lie intimement les activités du tourisme à celles euh, de la conservation et de la protection à travers l'Institut congolais pour la conservation de la nature. Mais également, on aimerait développer une triptyque Tourisme, développement et énergie. Euh, comment on pourrait ainsi trouver euh, des financements pour réaliser euh, un tel genre de triptyque L'autre élément, c'est comment trouver des financements pour des projets intégrateurs parce que nous faisons partie de plusieurs organisations sous-régionales, pour la République démocratique du Congo par exemple, il y a la SADEC, il y a la CAC, etc. Il y a SICOS de l'autre côté. Est-ce qu'on peut également euh, trouver une solution à, à cette préoccupation Nous pensons donc que euh, ce sont là, les questions auxquelles nous aurions voulu trouver une réponse et plus spécialement s'il y a des investisseurs qui peuvent accepter de prendre en charge les études de faisabilité pour la suite pour les pays qui à ce moment-là peuvent poser problème. Voilà. Serge Bakame, conseiller du ministre du Tourisme et de la RDC. Donc, merci pour, pour l'invitation qui va beaucoup nous aider à, à apprendre sur le financement du tourisme. On, ma préoccupation, j'ai des questions en fait. Hein. Content, on va apprendre, mais je me dis, les projets en Afrique, on en a tout plein dans nos tiroirs, et des bons projets. Le plan de financement, on en a. Comme tout le monde dit, tout le monde l'a dit avant moi, c'est l'argent qui nous manque, le financement. Mais euh, sur ce point-là, j'étais en train de réfléchir. Je me dis, vous dites que l'Afrique a beaucoup de potentialité, ce qui est vrai. Mais euh, étonnamment, on constate que les gens préfèrent investir dans le sous-sol que dans le tourisme. Alors, euh, comme la plupart des financements viennent de, de, de l'Occident en général ou, euh, ou, ou d'ailleurs, on se demande pourquoi ces mêmes personnes qui nous, qui nous apprend à promouvoir les tourismes n'investissent pas dans le tourisme et préfèrent investir dans le sous-sol. Euh, espérons que dans cet atelier, nous allons apprendre et connaître, savoir pourquoi ils sont plus intéressés dans le sous-sol malgré l'insécurité, malgré tout ce que vous pouvez euh, citer comme euh, élément de, de blocage. Mais ils investissent quand même beaucoup d'argent dans l'exploitation du sous-sol et non dans le tourisme. On se demande aussi, euh, c'est l'année du tourisme, euh, c'est l'an l'ONT, les projets, on peut les calquer. C'est-à-dire qu'il y a plusieurs projets qui existent, qui ont existé, donc euh, les projets n'ont pas de problème. Mais qu'on nous dise, quels sont, par l'ONT, cette année, qu'est-ce qui a été euh, euh, prévu, qu'est-ce qui a été euh, planifié pour l'investissement du tourisme en Afrique. Donc, euh, espérons que durant tout, euh, tout cet atelier, nous allons apprendre et savoir, connaître, pourquoi est-ce que euh, plusieurs investisseurs ne s'impliquent pas dans le tourisme alors que l'Afrique est prête 
à recevoir euh, euh, les financements sur euh, le tourisme. Mais malheureusement, on s'intéresse à autre chose. Il s'intéresse à autre chose qu'au tourisme. Merci. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Francesca de Chamoy Lablache, policy analyst from the Ministry of, okay? Ministry of Tourism, Seychelles. Um, as a policy analyst, I am also responsible to assess tourism related projects uh, from local and uh, foreign investors. Um, I am attending this workshop to gain more insight in terms of project development, um, which I will be able to um, share with others back at home. Um, I am also hoping to um, to have a better understanding on how to identify tourism um, pr projects in my country. For instance, right now um, in Seychelles, we are placing a lot of emphasis on uh, product diversification as a means to curb uh, um, development in accommodation. And I believe we have a lot of uh, um, opportunities in terms of um, for um, product div diversification. Um, I also look forward to have a better insight on the different financing options. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. Uh, what I have seen, everyone wants to increase their knowledge in project design, project implementation, financing, and uh, how to diversify in in the tourism sector that's the the base we have uh, represented over here one two three four five six seven, eight countries with the same objective for this workshop but as, as i told right at the beginning m many of you can share your knowledge in some aspects that the others needs and of course i will uh, i will support everything by by my presentations also so thank you very much all of you let's start with the first real session that is project definition design and promotion that hopefully we will start and finish today and tomorrow we'll go through the financing issues okay the first thing I would like to say is we need, as I told you before, a sustainable project. It doesn't matter the size, it doesn't matter the reach, but it should be at least sustainable and feasible. Uh, it should be integrated in a broader plan, for example, a national plan or an inter international objectives that are matching with the UNWTO, with the World Bank, with the African Development Bank, etc. There are several organizations that believe that tourism is a key player for creating jobs and, and growth. For example, we have the International Finance Corporation, that's the arm of the World Bank in financing projects, and they invest a lot in tourism sector, and they have a, a good knowledge on that, and they also assist in terms of consultancy. It should be coherent and integration among all the stakeholders of your country in terms of the private sector, the civil society, government at least. Okay? And it should at least have this minimum aspects. We have the objective of the project, size and type of project, of course a description of your country, because I have seen projects when they describe the place, they only describe the location where, where it will be taking place, the, the project, but they don't describe the, the country. The investor doesn't have much time to investigate if, you, if your country has any issue that he should he or she should know the business climate of the country the uh, financing how much do we need how much we are going to finance okay Wait. 
lot of questions to answer. And this is to be clear, we need to have all these questions answered in three pages. Are we able to do that? Of course, yes. Hmm? Let me show you an example. I saw this project uh, quite time back and I wanted to to show it to you because I think it's a uh, it's a project I, I didn't took uh, take any example of Africa just to be more neutral and to have another inputs of another countries this is a lodge and spa uh, location that is in Ecuador South America South Central America This is the business plan and the fa facility analysis. Look at this, l at the contents. The executive summary has three pages, so it's possible to have an executive summary. Okay, Cameron? <laughs> See, the project concept is only two pages. All those questions should be answered in two pages. And then we go deep. But we, we need to be precise, accurate, because the ones who have the money doesn't have time. They need to spend the money, so they're in a hurry. Okay? Mm. Yes. The mic, please. Thank you, Jan. The second row. Okay. Thank you, Jan. Yeah, just a question. Instead of uh, presenting the 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 summer of project, okay, in two pages, mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to pro to present it in short video? No. It oh. could be an option. Yeah, but uh, it, you have to be careful because that video could be viral on the internet, and may you may don't want to share to all of them. You, you have to take care who, to whom you give that video. You can show it, but don't, don't give it if you don't want to spread the word out so much. You understand me? No, it's just uh, on B2B with the potential investor. But the investor needs some paper to analyze later. Yeah, of course, with paper. No? If you have the project uh, more paper the, than usual, for example, 50 pa pages, we can prepare a short video to show the the project in short time. Mm. Not applicable. No, they prefer uh, a written executive summary. Okay. A video could help to promote the location, to promote your country, to promote the site, the location, the region. But what kind of video, if there is nothing in that location, you have to build a, a tourism asset, you can show him the design in a later phase. Okay, But you need to have, you need to have clear in two, three pages w what's the project about. An executive summary, because th that's the way they they use to analyze if they go deeper okay. or they reject the project. Okay, thanks. Okay. So. Une question. Uh, ah, pardon. Oui. Oui. Il y a un point qui attire mon attention. Je voudrais avoir une précision concernant l'élaboration du, du projet. Vous parlez d'un projet impliquant tous les acteurs nationaux. Euh, Pouvez-vous insister sur les, ces acteurs euh, Quels sont les, les acteurs à oui. privilégier dans the, the, the public actors, the, the, the key actors are the, starting from the ministries, uh, the tourism ministry for sure, 
economic ministry for the tax, uh, for example, exemption that may have the project. You need to talk with the international uh, agency that promotes your country in terms of attracting investment. You need to talk with the regional government and you need to talk with the local authorities and communities. Those are the levels. All should be coordinated. All should believe in the project. You have to, to sell a project abroad, you have to do your homework at home first. If there is no agreement within, within the, the government, starting from the community level till the ministry, don't sell the project because the, the investor will come at the avant, say that courage, it will quit the project. Okay? More questions? Oh, this is nice, uh, this is interactive. As I said uh, on my interview, this is our first time. Mm -hmm. And Angola is very hungry on the financement. Uh, because, uh, as you know, we had uh, a long uh, civil war, and everything needs to be fixed. And today, not tomorrow. Of course, uh, we sped to Gaza, Africa, and Spain, my country sped, uh, more investment. As our colleague said on his interview, it is very easy uh, country that have money to invest on the minerals. No? Tourism is quite difficult. I, I last year when we were being at Fitur, I took two projects in the Fitur. One of them it's a small project belonging to one private company. It's a, a demanding a very small amount for investment. Three point five million US dollars. But since today, we haven't, we presented to several potential investors. But since date, I could not find the financing for this investment. Uh, we show that project on videos and all the elements, but more. The private investor already made half of investment. The total project costs about uh, eight, uh, 80 million US dollar. He made already half of investment. We went to Spain in order to, to arrange at least four millions. And all the elements was there. So my interview on this workshop is as a consultant to make me possible to understand what's really happened. Maybe to invest in Africa and we should know uh, we should need more than that because I have this example to share with you. And since date I haven't arranged the investment for that project. Do, do you have the video here? Pardon? You have the video here? I had the video okay, in my computer. We'll I can we'll share with you. We'll have a look at it. Yeah. And I'll give you my my personal opinion. You know, and everyone can... can Thank you. This interview, uh, and uh, maybe Mr. Pabron, Casa Africa, uh, need to... to to study this, I would like to suggest Casa Africa uh, what was did in 10 years, particular on the investment side. To, to take note, maybe the way we are making the job
could be could be not the the best one maybe i think we need to know what casa africa did in 10 year in africa his job in africa so to take note maybe we, we will need to change some uh, some uh, some uh, some items i would like to speak in my portuguese language to to make possible my understand thank you any other question yeah. well uh, Investor 2018 will be the ninth edition, if I'm not mistaken. Several investments have been promoted and implemented in in Africa, f not only from a Spanish company, from international company that all also attend Investor Fitur. Uh, you have to take into consideration that Spain have passed uh, or U and European Union also have passed a, a financial crisis that also have constrained investment abroad. Uh, you have to analyze your country if it's open or it's not so open to to facilitate investment. So we'll, we'll tackle all those elements and at the end tomorrow evening my idea is for you to have a proper analysis of your country, if it's open or not open, is Spanish fault or investor fault? I mean, it's a accumulation of factors of elements that has happened during these ten years, or even in the last year when you presented your your video, your project. We'll have a look at it. I will recommend if there is possibility to recommend any anything and uh, all the inputs that you will receive will will for sure uh, enrich your your video or your project okay that's my intention at least okay okay uh, in 10 minutes we are leaving so uh, le let's go through through all these questions there are a lot of them there are 12 questions to resume everything in one question and in three pages okay how was this opportunity identified it is a nature-based tourism as as i told you before i will insist in sustainability environmental because your continent has huge potential in in natural environment uh, tourism it is a heart or soft infrastructure this is a core or supporting attraction be careful with that because sometimes supporting attraction could become a core attraction okay we'll analyze it later is the tourism resource is identified as a key factor for the country What kind of serving facilities will need this project? Or it is a serving facility, like a hotel, for example. The location, where it will be located, we have to identify, identify properly with maps, uh, etc. where will be located the project. What are the target market? And what are the characteristics? Will I, I will insist a lot on on doing the market research in terms of targeting investors and in terms of targeting tourists. There are two types of marketing that we're going to discuss these two days. It's not the same to to attract an investor and attract a tourist. It's not the same. So you need two different strategies, right? As the question before, which public organization will participate or will be involved and what are their role? Who will coordinate all the public institutions in this project? We need only one and only one message. M many times when investors 
ask some question to the tourism department or the tourism authority, they tell one thing and when they reach, for example, to the urban planning department, they say the opposite. And that for the investor is a headache and probably he'll, he'll quit. Okay. What in investment in infrastructure is needed? How do we reach to the place? How accessible is? Do we need a road? Do we need an airport? Do we need a hotel maybe? Or a hospital because it's adventurous uh, tourism. If we need to evacuate, we need a, a hospital near the, the, the park maybe. We have to think in everything and of everything. And again, with the market, uh, market, what kind of people we want to attract? And all these questions will take you, again, uh, sorry to insist, we have to be very concise, very accurate to a three project page identification. Only three. Is okay, L let me show you the case of Ecuador again. This is the executive summary, okay? Uh, sorry. Over here, they explain where it be, the location. Okay? It's visual. Y you don't need a video, y you can take a picture. Okay? I if it's the community engaged with the project or not, uh, I will not read the full document, but it says the community will manage the the lodge you are involving the the community it's quite important for the investor the region tourism industry they explain what they are living on the object is the main objective of the project who is supporting the project if they have already the finance or not what they need, environmental impact, and the possible uh, revenues that is prospected. Okay, we'll we'll talk about how to calculate uh, the revenues. Okay, and of course uh, the percentage of uh, return of investment. And a beautiful table resuming all the figures. Okay. And finally, the capital and ownership structure and the marketing target. And that's it. You, uh, sorry. And that's it. You don't need any more in an exact summary. You have everything. Y you don't have to go deep in present in this case 29 pages I have seen very tough projects very difficult projects with only these three pages so we have to be able to do that okay I will share this document uh, as is, it is public is on the net published is an example so I will share this document for you it's in English it's properly done well done in my opinion, you, you may have another templates also, of course. And uh, the idea is to, I will not say copy, but benchmark this document. Okay? So, as then they go deeper, f as uh, I'm, I'm following also this this uh, document, the project concept that we have talked about, project concept or project definition is the same thing, okay? So they, they go a bit deeper, okay? They, they talk about what are the things to be done, what investment they, they need and where it's going to be implemented. 
in the as you can see in the in the floor they will put some some wood they will amend the the stones that are already there they will build a pool uh, a talasoretepi spa and spa and then they move to the site okay the site we, we will talk about it uh, properly we need an urban planner or an architect that that help us to develop we, we are not experts on land maybe uh, is is there any urban planner over here no no so we need help we need to talk out with our ministry or with our local authority that may have an architect in their in their staff to help us to develop this before contracting uh, architecture cabinet okay so I will leave it here as I don't want to go deep in another issue to, to leave it at the middle we'll we'll have uh, I think they have told me now to have a lunch break so we'll continue later okay there, there is a bus uh, uh, downstairs and we'll take it to the to the next destination okay thank you <laughs>